When I was Secretary of State for Education, I ran into trouble in a number of circumstances around the word utility. Was higher education were you useful? Were universities useful? Or did they exist somehow for themselves in an independent view? I took the view then, and I take the view now, that there has to be utility and value in universities. So to take the example that you've just mentioned, research, I think it needs to be able to be demonstrated, and by the way, I think it absolutely can be demonstrated, that research is beneficial to the society. Um, medical research is the single most obvious example where there have been enormous advances which have changed the uh, condition of life for millions of people throughout the world. But that similar scrutiny for medicine, you have to apply that question in the other areas of research as well and say, well, is it enabling us to change our lives in better ways? And I don't think some people in the university community accept the right uh, for that discussion. The, the vogue word is impact in that context, which I don't think is very helpful. I think it's the right thing. But it's the general view that if you're getting support for your research, that there's a benefit coming back to society. And I think that needs to be embraced by all parts of the university community. Whatever the issue that we're looking at, whether it's uh, environmental challenges, economic challenges, or whatever, the way that people respond, the way that people behave, the way that societies deal with these challenges is an absolutely core question and is not sufficiently understood. If you take the Queen's classic question after the 2008 financial crash, why did you economists not predict all this? It's a fair question for her to answer. So economists have to answer the question, well, how good are we at both understanding what's happening and making proposals for taking it forward? And that runs right across the whole social sciences. Now, in fact, the irony is that social sciences, in my opinion, are doing a good job at doing these things, even though they don't, haven't got it all right, but they don't appreciate the importance of what they're doing. I think that's also true in the arts and humanities. Uh, you only have to look at the importance of history and the, the, the whole development of history, archaeology, anthropology, the knowledge of our society, the success of books like Sapiens recently, going right back through the whole history of the human being, to see that the massive breakthroughs are being made by academics in these areas, which are exceptionally important for informing uh, us all about our societies. Here we are in Australia and the history of the indigenous peoples, the culture they create and so on is really quite an important aspect of the contemporary culture today of the way Australia operates and we know about that precisely because of those humanities and arts researchers who've done the work. So I think they should be proud and confident of what they're doing. And just one final point, they sometimes feel that to get a job after university you need to have a, a STEM, a science, technology or mathematics degree. I think that's absolutely not true. I think many employers are looking for people who are educated to think in a humanities, arts, social sciences way and I don't think there's any reason for academics in that field to feel they should take a, a backward step. One most important, tell the whole society, the public, what the universities are doing. They find it very, very difficult to do that, or they do it in a very dense way. Sometimes it's purely language, that the academic language is inaccessible to, to people more widely. But often, universities simply don't tell the story of the work they're doing and how it impacts on the wider society. So that's the first thing. The second piece of advice I'd give is to build relations and partnerships across society. Uh, so with employees of a variety of different kinds, public and private sector, with non-governmental organisations, to demonstrate the, the, the benefits of working together to improve the works of, of those employers, to improve the work of those non-governmental organisations, to improve the work of government. All of them benefit from working with universities, but there still is a bit of an ivory tower mentality in some universities, by no means all, that thinks what they have to do is sit in their offices, studies, and just think and put a band around their head and get on with it. That's not good enough. You've got to have a wide range of partnerships um, and even alliances for trying to take the work of universities forward.